If you want a lightweight, easy to build van, check out this van. Gay and Robert built their entire van, including a couch to bunk bed conversion in three weeks out in the desert out of 80-20 and Coroplast. This van features a full wet bath with composting toilet, a galley kitchen, a modular electric system, and a couch that turns into bunk beds at night. And it's transferable to another van. And before we dive in, I just want to invite all the women watching to join our Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can find the link in our Facebook group, Gal Adventures, and the link's below. Everybody. my name is Gay and this is my husband Robert and we're Gay and Robert on YouTube and this is our Springer van which we built out all by ourselves. This is a 2022 Sprinter 144 two-wheel drive. It has the um, four-cylinder diesel instead of the six-cylinder diesel. Um, yeah we built it out. We had built out uh, 2019 during COVID which mm -hmm. is a four-wheel drive 144 and uh, it's a high roof also here. Um, and we decided we wanted to make some changes. This is an interim build out. We're then have another uh, Sprinter on order 2023 with all wheel drive. And so we didn't finish bits and pieces. So like the ceiling, which we don't mind at all, no. um, is not finished. Um, some of the sidewalling isn't as what we planned on. The material that we purchased wasn't, but we're just gonna wait for that new van. But other than that, we made the changes we wanted. We made this uh, counter longer. The other van had a stainless steel countertop. Um, of course, this was butcher block. The reason it only took us three weeks is we're using this um, super simple modular extruded aluminum um, to build out the entire van. Um, it's 80-20 material, and we have experience with that from our previous build, and we uh, use a MACAD system. It's a 80-20 um, um, CAD system, I guess, but it's just a software that you download. It's from Netherlands, but you can download it for free online and then you can go ahead and design. So we designed all this that we have, which is, you know, not a lot in a small van, but we designed this on that CAD program. And then you just go ahead and just make cuts and then assemble it with uh, connectors that they sell on Amazon or uh, McMaster. And that system actually tells you every single cut, what type of connectors you can use, um, all the different nuts and bolts that you need for all the angles. And it's a very sleek system. And that's what allowed us to build it out so quickly. Yeah, because you can quickly, fin you know, you can get a finished product very quickly. Your corners are already there. Um, it's more industrial look, which we love. And uh, and then for the uh, panels, these white panels, this is just corrugated plastic. Mm -hmm. And I think it's called Coroplast. Yep. And it's fantastic. We just doubled up because it's really thin. Mm -hmm. And if we took a knife, it would just go right through it. But yeah. They're know, very you, solid and durable. Solid. And the big thing is when you're traveling is that rattle. And you want to have a, um, as many things not rattling as possible because there's always going to be some rattle. And the ones we used before were like a, a plastic, but they didn't fit the track as good. So they rattled and we dealt with that all the time. This works really well. We were questioning if this would, but it did. Um, in the actual uh, 8020 and how the um, corrugated plastic works, you have the channel in here from the 8020. And so we just slipped the corrugated plastic on the inside and then just finished it out to give it this nice look with these corners here. Um, all these latches, these industrial latches work really well. And then the cabinetry isn't banging open when you're going around a corner and all your stuff isn't flying out. And so that's what we really love about this system itself. The key was to keep everything simple. So yeah. even on our 2018, it was to keep s simple. Because we had a, a Winnebago View motorhome. And uh, even though it was small and all that, it was too much for us. Too many systems. So we knew what we wanted, keeping things simple. Like these, everything is or, um, ratchet strapped down to the cargo D-rings. This is a cargo van. So people yeah. put big pieces of cargo in here, 
strap them down and drive. So we use that system then to strap all this stuff down. So nothing's bolted in here. And the reason for that then it is very modular and we can move it. And our plan is when we get our next van, which is coming in November, we are literally going to take all this out and put it into that van. We're not going to rebuild anything. Um, and that is the ideal. We'll finish everything else then in that van when that comes. But even when we needed to um, add a different space to this area in the kitchen, we have one wheels in the back. We needed more room. So literally we unratcheted it, slid it down about three inches, and then we had a garage for our one wheels in the back because there was it's such a sleek and simple system. Yeah, another thing we did different on this one, the first one we originally had uh, five Battleborn batteries, which we had them stacked um, in uh, this floor to ceiling wall, here. Yeah. And we had all Victron components, all the cabling necessary, mm -hmm. all that. We switched to EcoFlows and uh, the EcoFlows work really well because they're modular. So we can take this one out and go to a coffee shop, plug it in and charge quickly. Um, but we end up, we, we have five of these guys. And so we, we love that. The, the battery packs work really well. And you have a, Bob has them um, installed and an inverter. So they do recharge off of the engine itself. And yeah. so we can get fully charged within an hour's drive with uh, these batteries that we have. And so we like the simplicity of that as well. Yeah, we have 400 watts of solar on the roof, which we didn't want to necessarily do, but uh, we found we, it was necessary, so it works good. But they're just flat paneled, so we didn't have roof rails. And again, this one's a temporary van. The next one we'll, we ordered, we'll have roof rails and we'll put full solar on the roof. So I think the biggest thing for us and the, the most important thing is opening up the space in the van. And so we installed swivel seats, as you can see, which adds a lot more living space, um, which we personally wanted. Using the 80-20, um, we built all our cabinetry out of that. And the great thing about the 80-20 is you can put things in once you have other things done too. We had this space, but we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do with batteries. And once we figured out the batteries, we then um, made this great little cabin here. And this is, yes, this is Bob's clothes, his clothes cabinet. That's <laughs> all he has for clothes in there. That's his. That's awesome. Yeah. And again, we have the little EcoFlow up here, which has uh, USB, regular outlets on it. And so they're very convenient for charging things. We like that as well. This is the Lagoon um, table top swivel, which we use. And here's our um, tabletop itself that we have stored under there. Um, and Evan Lifer knows that every space is you know, extremely valuable. And so that's where we store our tabletop. Then we can sit here and enjoy our meals if we want. We can swivel it over there if we want to work on our computers or things. So, and this itself, as you can see, is our, our kitchen. We actually just bought this butcher block from Home Depot and sanded it down and stained it. And we like how it softened the look with the 8020 instead of the full on industrial look. Um, this is our shoe storage uh, that was one of the biggest things we found that was a problem in our last van we had shoes stuffed everywhere and we're like no we can't have that we need to have a place for our shoes this is a 12 volt refrigerator um that it's a normal dormitory um, size refrigerator but that runs solely off of this EcoFlow itself and that works really well so one of the other problems is, again, with the refrigerator, when it's full, you turn the corner and the door goes flying open. And I was tired of getting up and picking up all the food out of the refrigerator. We just went to Home Depot, got this great little door latch that you would put on a spring door itself. And the, again, the great thing with the 8020, you have these channels so you can use the nuts and bolts with the wing system in the back um to install hardware um from home depot to make it work so you know it, i can't say enough about the 8020 it's just so functional when you want to add attachments and change things for it this is the overhead cabinetry for the kitchen where we store most of our food this has these great latches on here they will never come open they're spring loaded i'll open the other side for you so all our food is up in here. Dishes are up in there. We do have lighting, string lighting inside the channel itself underneath. 
that um, creates a nice ambiance in here and enough light for when I'm cooking at night when it's dark out. This again is more is the kitchen. The great thing about this 8020 and when you um, are building it again, you can find ways to make things work. So we just bought a uh, slide system and then we attached the 8020 to the actual slide out. The nice thing about this drawer is the hinges and so that stays in, in place and nothing is opening as you're running around the corners and things like that. And then same thing under here, all of my pots and pans are under here, um, extra storage for the kitchen. And then the actual sink itself, um, I just ordered a bar size sink. It's really a deep sink, um, which I really like. I like that the swivel so that can get out of the way. We just have a water can underneath that collects all of our gray water. And then I just dump that in a porta potty or a toilet, a wayside toilet. So we do not have any tanks underneath the van for anything. We didn't want that because we do like going more off road. Yes, this is a, um, a front uh, two wheel drive only, but our last van was a four by four and we enjoyed getting back into places and we don't want to worry about hitting anything with rocks underneath. So nothing is underneath in the van itself. So moving on to the back area, this is where we store our clothes. We actually have our Starlink in here as well. The magnets hanging on top for when we put it on the roof. This is my clothes section. This is our um, water tank, which is a 20 gallon water tank that's sitting on a frame. And then I have my soda stream below, but we do also have our Wabasto water heater and water pump system under there as well. And again, the great thing about this is if I want to adjust the shelving here, I just have to loosen the bolts and then slide everything up the channel and minor adjustments. Super easy. This is our bathroom area. Everything's out of 8020 as well. And maybe we can swing around to the other side. I'll open the doors. So this is our bathroom, as you can see. We made this very simple as well. Um, the Wabasto does have a water pump on it and a water heater, but we just have a very simple solution for our shower head. We do not want to use a lot of water. So we literally just took a piece of PVC piping, we drilled five little holes in it, and then we just have a normal turn on, turn off valve for our shower. And so that it's very controlled and we're not wasting the water at all. This is our water tank. The other thing we really liked about this water tank is that we wanted to be able to fill it. We didn't want to have to climb up to the top. So you can actually fill this from the top in here. We can then obviously open the door and see how much water we have. We don't need to have a uh, monitor. I can look in there and, you know, see how much water we have. And then literally we just take the hose and we fill it up through here. If we don't have water, the nice thing about this is we can actually go into a store, a grocery store, and we can fill it just with gallon jugs too if we need to and if we're in a pinch. So this is our water heater controller. This is a crude system set up, not right now, because we are going to do another, um, we are getting the other van and we're going to move things and then we'll make this more permanent. So this is just an, um, a mahogany shower grate that we ordered off of Amazon and we cut and modified that. We built a frame on the bottom with 8020 to hold that. The other thing that we do have though is this is an oil pan um, that you use for cars and that is where our gray water sits in. Um, we have to finish this off and put an actual valve on it um, for when we want to dump it but it's just gray water so not too much concerns there with that. And this is Airhead uh, composting toilet which is very convenient. We um, love having the composting toilet because it's very simple and you can dump this anywhere as other van lifers may know. And Okay, I see something really clever over here. Yeah. <laughs> this is our toilet paper holder, which we need to have a cover on it because this is our wet shower as well and your toilet paper is gonna get um, wet. 
And so we took the panel off of this because this is hollow, cut out the panel, inlaid that and set it in, screwed it on and then it closes. On the back of uh, um, the kitchen here, you can see we have one wheels. And again, the great thing about the 8020 is you can attach anything to it to hold things in place. So we added something from Home Depot and we used the um, hardware to put a hook on there to hold the one wheels in place. We have a handle installed up here to hold our helmets. You can attach anything to the 8020. <laughs> great great stuff so this is the dual top with Bosto Peter so this um, creates the diesel heat for the interior but it also heats the water so I think it has uh, I want to say a two or three gallon water tank in here and it just runs off the diesel off of the uh, sprinter already mm -hmm. um, this is really nice this was questionable. Our last van, we just have gravity feed with no hot water, which was no problem. But we wanted to try something a little different on this one. And so we love this thing. They designed it so it can go underneath the van, but we just don't have enough room under there. And we don't want anything underneath the van. So having it in here worked out very well. But that was a big issue because that forced us to have this taller than what we wanted, even though now that we have it, we like it tall. Yep. So, but Again, the great thing about the corrugated plastic, you can just cut this out and then you can put all your, you know, knobs and gadgetries. We have the um, vent down there. Just take a knife and cut out the plastic and that's easy to do too. One of our challenges on this design in 144 is we wanted the bathroom in the back and the shower. That was a key for us. So we needed to figure out a bunk bed system. For the mattress itself, we ordered a bed in a box and I used a meat cutter mm -hmm. to cut the foam and to cut the sizes of the mattresses itself. And then um, we just have paneling board underneath to give it some stability. And so we'll show you how this yeah. all sets up. And originally on the first van, um, Gay went ahead and sewed up all the cushions, uh, covers and everything else, which was great. But in this time we just ordered off of Amazon. I'm not even mm -hmm. sure what these are called. Yeah but they just stretch over. And so they work out really well. Yeah. The nice thing is if this gets really dirty or stained, we just throw it out. It's like $20 to right. order a new set. You know, and it's set. washable, whereas the other ones weren't. It was so well done professionally. So we just take this so out. So we just take the base off. We have these straps, which we'll show you. Here is our bedding. We keep the bedding nice and rolled up too. So it's a quick take down and set up. This is the back of the bed. Yeah. And this now will pivot up. And then, you know, you're looking at this saying, well, no, this isn't going to hold something, but we'll show you how it works. These straps, which are spine board straps, and I think they're 700 pounds each. I just pop in here. And that's that's it. That's it. And then the bedding. Literally have the bedding rolled up. So if you so if you look at this, what it is is these rear um 80 20 pieces do not are not structural at all that only allows it to pivot up and uh everything is held here so it's basically a basket um that gay sleeps on with these holding so these each are 700 pounds so you know plenty um and then i sleep under there and it works good super uh, easy for me to get up and down i literally just do that <laughs> all in the bed and and again, all the way, all the way is here and here. <laughs> it's super light, and so you don't have to sit and really hold it up or worry about it falling. We can just use our hip on it. One hand. Really, the 
the most challenging part is um, getting this hook out of this, <laughs> but it goes pretty fast. I can set it up all by myself too, or it is a one person, it's not pro a problem doing that either because it's so light. Yeah, it's very lightweight. You just have to lean your body against it. I would reach that. It was like a We use really lightweight um, pillows and blankets because that takes up a lot of room. Uh, blankets take up quite a bit of space. So we just rely on the heater then. So then this just tilts down. Hinges down. This goes in the back. And that's it. And we're done. Voila. So another big thing with for us is have the bed be done during the day yeah. and not have the bed out all day. So right. We do this immediately. As soon as we get up, we uh, transform it back into a couch. And, and as you saw, it takes very little time. Yeah. So. yeah. I want to thank Gay and Robert for sharing their amazing and innovative van with us. If you liked this video, please share it. And if you'd like to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other information to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. If you are a woman who would like to join in deeper conversation, join our Facebook group, Gal Adventurers, where I organize our weekly Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey.